people are not going to permit police brutality to go on. Reverend in Clegg. Every city in America. Reverend Clegg. We had in almost 100 cities race violence last summer. Mm. If police brutality continues, we'll have it in 200 cities and next summer. Screaming now, and demanding justice and setting fires and rioting and looting businesses. That is not the America that I recognize. It is not the America that I want to raise my children. It is not the America that I want to see my family live in. And so I use my voice to speak out against it. My question is, why don't you? Going on and black people have decided they're not going to tolerate oppression any longer. You know what it is. And I it is. Uh, yes, I have uh, some reactions to that. I think it seems that police are more concerned with uh, uh, putting down riots and uh, enforcing law and don't seem to be concerned with some of the causes that are leading to some of the distress uh, and to the riots. Association, if he has Fish. We'll get back to you. Chief Jenkins, can you pull some of these strings together uh, from your well, point of view and, and uh, uh, get some balance out of this discourse? Well, I'd like to say at this point that I regret that this nation has a very serious problem that we must find the answer to it. Now, the first order of business must always be law and order and justice for all. Now, the causes must be identified and they must be corrected. And that is exactly what we are determined to do here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'd like for Everett Williams to speak on that also. And when we talk about the hostility the police departments have, we've got to realize that I think most of these policemen feel they are representing the majority of the people in the community. I think in Atlanta, Georgia, when the police department knows that all of the citizens, including Negroes and whites, do not condone any of the skullduggery which they may engage in, it will stop. It will happen in Detroit when white citizens support other citizens in that city. Seeing that policemen deal justly with all citizens, you will not have the same kind of problem. Now, Rep. anybody... Reverend Williams, yes. time, is, time is running out on us. We're going to get back to you. I think you'll agree. The sociologists, the economists, and other experts say that the masses of black people are dissatisfied, unemployed, oppressed, and fed up. They, are, they have positions to which they have been appointed, and they uh, think that the only way that they can protect their job is by pretending in, the front, in front of the white man. And these niggas say, why isn't David Chappelle saying anything? Because David Chappelle understands what the fuck he is seeing. So we're going to repeat all of that, and uh, it's been endorsed by Dave Chappelle because the streets are alive. Why not just let the gangbangers kill one another? Is that what we want? Is that what we want to see? Blood splattered in the streets? You lock them up, and you're in the middle. You, people had a right to protest, a right to free speech. There were rules. You couldn't lock them all up. But many of these uh, powerful people had had their way until now, and as things began to change, the police, police were there to maintain order. But when the answer to your problems come knocking on your door, are you ready to stop hanging on to your hang-ups? The ordinary person. Now, the ordinary person also is aware that policemen can abuse this authority. What was one of the shocking things of the 1960s, that we had this incredibly dumb generation of people that were shocked that policemen abuse authority? By people. You have to set an example if you want others to do right and live a highly disciplined and a highly moral a life of high morals. But you're pushing us to it. You're leaving us no choice. We're asking, we're begging the students up at Columbia, they ask, the brothers down south ask, the brothers in Latin America, the brothers in Africa, they're all asking. All they're doing is asking. Our fathers asked, our grandfathers asked. The presidents of our universities, our colleges, had to go to your back doors to beg that their children be given just enough money so that they could be taught something to live off. And, and yet still, they asked and asked and asked, and you refused to give them anything. I ask him, what did the Negro community want? He wants freedom, justice, and equality for the black people here in America, which you agree they don't have. I don't think that those policemen themselves would deny that they're devils, nor would any Negro who witnessed such a deed, 
deny that they are devils. Well, about the other part of it, there's no justice here for us black people. There's no future for us, nor our children in civilized America. And I didn't make that up. He, he said it in his own he, And he's correct in what he says, sir. Well, what does it mean? Does uh, it mean you're going to get out or It what? means the same thing that Attorney General Robert Kennedy means when he says that the number one domestic problem in America is the race problem, that it is almost impossible to solve it. It's almost impossible to give justice to Negroes. I want to share part of my good fortune with you. He has no reason to. I think there's going to be violence, see, because there already has been. I mean, when people try to free themselves, they kill Negroes in the South all the time. The Negro man has been emasculated and destroyed by that, by the fact that every time he stood up, he got just snuffed out right there. So I don't think there's any question but that there's going to be violence and brutality. But my attitude is that is that the brutality and the violence shouldn't become the reason that you want to be free. But that's a very personal thing, the freedom is. See, the question isn't what is freedom to me, it's what price freedom, because sometimes the price that you pay for freedom is the very thing that makes you a slave again. That's what I think happened in Russia in 1917. But I know that there's going to be violence. I mean, I think it gets blurred, especially the individual, if I face you violently. See, who knows where that violence began? See, I mean, I might, if I face you with a gun and you got, I got orders to kill you and you got orders to kill me, then we can't really deal with each other. Well, you're, you're a target and I'm a target. So you can't really talk about that. But you have to, you can talk about the larger thing, the much more universal thing. The reason that you're there, see, is really not to kill, but to free. God, do you believe that? Definitely. You do? Definitely. We're going to have to leave it at that. And Malcolm... I'm sure he's done a good job in rehabilitating you. It was a pleasure to have you on City Desk. I'm in Chicago for the next three weeks at the local mosque at 54th and Greenwood for a special lecture series. Let us take a look at Harlem, 1964, when approximately 20 Molotov cocktails were exploded in Harlem. And in 1965, in August, in Watts, Los Angeles, 2,000 Molotov cocktails were exploded. I think that we are developing a, a more sophistication, and I think in the next uprising, and I suspect it will probably come through either in Washington, D.C., or in an, another unnamed uh, city, uh, where you're going to find 5,000 Molotov cocktails used. Whoa! And they called me the big pill.